Hi, I'm Mitch Gallagher, and this is Sweetwater's Guitars and Gear. This week on Guitars and Gear, we are joined by a special guest. We have Mike Skasha from Ministry, from Rigor Mortis, Clinician yes. for Gibson, all kinds of things you have going on. Yeah, Thanks for coming yeah. in. I appreciate it. Good to meet you, man. Yeah. Great to be here. We're glad to have you here. Well, thank you for having me. Yeah, absolutely. So you're here to do some uh, some videos. You're going to mm -hmm. be showing off the uh, Gibson guitars and things. Yes, but yes. Let's uh, let's talk a little bit about how you got started. Okay. Um, you're from Texas originally, yes. correct? And how did you get started playing guitar? Well, uh, it's kind of a long story. Um, I'll try and shorten it. Uh, my, my family's pretty musical, even though nobody played any instruments. There was always music around my house. Mm -hmm. And uh, the first guitar player I ever saw was uh, Scotty Moore. Mm -hmm. And watching him do solos, I then later on saw uh, Les Paul play on TV when I was a kid and watching Hee Haw and stuff growing up. Sure. I would see these guitar players and I'd be like, man, that's what I want to do. My dad actually wanted me to be a drummer. He grew up with Gene Krupa okay. in New York, and and uh, and so he he had a, he was a jazz guy and and wanted me to he was always playing me jazz records and stuff. Uh, I had three older sisters who were all groupies, okay. so they were like in different genres of music. So they were pushing music on me. Mm -hmm. uh, so I I just picked the guitar up uh, and got really serious with it at age thirteen, mm -hmm. and um, I'm self taught. Right. Uh, I don't even, I can't read any music. Mm -hmm. I don't even know what a scale is. <laughs> really? Really? Wait, so everything's by ear? Everything's by ear. I actually attempted, believe it or not, I didn't want to be a rock star or a musician. I wanted to be a teacher. <laughs> um, but my, my, my parents at the time, I wasn't, I wasn't doing too well in school, so they, I wanted to go to Juilliard School of Arts. Mm -hmm. And uh, they didn't think I would do well in it, so I kind of rebelled and, and started playing rock and roll and stuff. Right, right. But um, I would go to get these lessons, and every time I would go in there, the teacher would be like, wow, what is that? What are you doing? Mm -hmm. it, turned around, it would always turn around where I would be showing the teacher something I would be doing when I wanted to learn how to get you know, this point to this point, you know? Right. Right. Uh, so I just kind of gave up after a while. Right. Yeah. So did you teach yourself off records then? Were you picking things off of uh, players uh, that you liked? Off or? records. Uh, I had this one teacher uh, growing up. His name was Danny Wigley. He had a uh, he owned his own music store called Wigley and Son in Irving, Texas. And uh, I would take lessons from him every week, and it would basically just be a jam session. Mm -hmm. I would bring in uh, you know records from like Yardbirds and ACDC and. Aerosmith and, and he'd put it on there and we would pick it out and he would show it to me and we would jam off each other. Right. You know, so, and then that kind of, uh, I took that little in, bit of inspiration from him and started doing it on my own. Mm -hmm. You know, where I would take Black Sabbath records and just sit there all day and, and play to them, you know. Right, yeah. right. Right. Now, a lot of your projects have, uh, well, most of your projects have leaned more toward the heavy side. Yeah. You know, more industrial, metal, you know, definitely right. heavy stuff. But your listening base and the things that you, you uh, cite as your influences are much broader than that. Yes. Can you talk a little bit about that and how that informs what you do as a, as a metal player? Kind of like you know, what, I, what I just mentioned a little while ago. I had, you know, my family is, is really responsible for that. Mm -hmm. I had, um, my mom was like in the Motown and, and kind of, you know, 50s, rock and roll stuff. Right. Uh, my dad was into jazz. My, my oldest sister was like into southern rock stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, Marshall Tucker, Leonard Skinner, stuff like that. Then I had another sister who was into like singer-songwriter stuff, like Neil Young, Bob Dylan. Okay. Uh, and then I had another sister who was into the heavier stuff, like Zeppelin and, and Deep Purple and Black Sabbath. Mm -hmm. So those all, you know, were put onto me. And then mm -hmm. I kind of just ran with it. I went and discovered bands on my own. Right. I grew up at a great time. I grew up at a time when you could go see concerts, when you could go into the record store and stare at album covers, you know? Right. And I used to buy them. If, if somebody had long hair and looked cool, I would buy it. That's right. how I discovered Thin Lizzy. Uh -huh. you know? uh -huh. um, and, then I, and then once I started doing, you know, once I was old enough to, to do that, I, start, I, I noticed I, I, and I still do this, I listen to a lot of older guys, you know? Mm -hmm. I love guitar players. Les Paul's my favorite guitar player. Mm -hmm. uh, I love Hank Garland, I love Chuck Berry, you know? I right. like a lot of country guys, a lot of the old country stuff. Right. Um, and uh, for some reason, the heavy music came out of me. Right. You know? 
Um, I think a lot of that had to do with uh, the 80s. Mm -hmm. When I, I came out of the 80s, I learned how to play guitar in the 70s. I came out of the 80s. My band rigor mortis, we got signed in, in 86, I believe it was, 87. Mm -hmm. And uh, at that time, pop music was glam metal, and we hated it. Right. When I look back on it, it really wasn't that bad, especially compared to now. <laughs> uh, but uh, it, made, it made us kind of rebel. We wanted to play, you know, when Iron Maiden came out, mm -hmm. They were heavier and faster than Judas Priest, and mm -hmm. it was like, well, how did they do that? Right. You know, so we we kind of ran with that. Mm -hmm. We want to be faster and heavier than them in Metallica. You mm -hmm. know, so it just kind of came out like that. You know, right, right, yeah. right. Uh, the, you know, the thing with Ministry too. That's that's kind of, that's how I met Al for Ministry. He, ministry was kind of a techno band. Mm -hmm in a way, and Al's a fantastic guitar player, but he got away from it and was into synthesizers. And when he heard Rigor Mortis, it made him pick his guitar back up again. <laughs> so when he called me in 1989 to come work with Ministry, his idea, his visual, was bringing my heavy guitar into his you know, synth pop sound okay. and combining it with samples and, and all kinds of synth things with guitars. Mm -hmm. And that's how that whole industrial metal thing was formed, because we were kind right. of the pioneers. I'm you know, happy the to pioneer say we were the pioneers of that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. No one was doing that at that time, right? And uh, uh, and it and it just worked. And I mm -hmm. I thought the idea was great because I'm I'm all about melodies. You know, I hear melodies in everything. You know, all sounds and stuff. And uh, I think that's that was my attraction to what he was doing. Mm -hmm. You know, so uh, when he brought it up to me, I was very excited that. It, yeah, this could really be cool. Right. You know, we didn't know it was going to turn into as big as it did. We, you know, we did the record Psalm 69, which was our biggest record. Uh, we didn't know it was going to sell two million copies. Right. You know? Um, we actually recorded that record and then didn't like it and re-recorded it. And we mm. didn't even let the record label hear it. When it was done, and a lot of money later, we sent it to them. They hated it. Yeah. They were like, this This is going to do nothing. And we were just like, oh, well. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> but it worked but it out okay, up. right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> right. Crazy, right. crazy times. Yeah, yeah, yeah very cool. Yeah. Very cool. So watching you play and checking out some videos and things, I was uh, watching in, in particular your right-hand technique. You're a very mm -hmm. clean player. You're, you're doing the super fast stuff and things, but it's very focused and there's not a lot of noise and things associated with that. And it looks Thank like you, you kind of have two different approaches to technique. Mm -hmm. Like you're kind of playing a little bit with your thumb and your, and your wrist here, and then when you go fast, you bring mm -hmm. your whole arm into it. Can you talk about that a little bit? Well, uh... Thank you for recognizing that, first of all. I'm very proud of my right hand. Um, the first thing I ever did when I picked up a guitar was this. I don't know where it came from. Mm -hmm. I don't know how it happened. I just picked it up and went. And uh, I kind of took it, I took that and built on it, mm -hmm. you know? Um, there were there was certain for a while I, w I would pick like that and then I would try yeah, doing it like this you know but I'm all about warming up and t and and exercises and stuff so I do mm -hmm. a lot of that to make sure that my notes come out clean okay. you know um, there's a lot of lot of a lot of practice that involved sure. still to this day only because I love doing it right. You know, I mean, I have my days where I don't feel like it, but you know, I have a passion for it. So, sure. um, it 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 just comes out like that, mm -hmm. you know, uh, and uh, and I get a lot. I mean, that's what I'm known for. Mm -hmm. So I never tried to really change it. Right. You know. Right. Um, but I do warm ups, and one of my warm ups that I do is I time myself. Mm -hmm. and, and exercises, and one of my exercises consists of a double pick of me just going. I'll time that for a minute on each string. Okay. You know, until my, my wrist is that big, you know. <laughs> and it turns into a six minute exercise. Sometimes uh -huh. I make it into a 12 if I go back and forth. Mm -hmm. And I do that before every show. Mm -hmm. And I try and do it every day, um, but I like to work on this hand more because this hand has to keep up with this and sure. it's a battle. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. So is it a relaxed technique when you're doing that? Because I see it, it looks like it's coming from your elbow. You know, Actually, I broke my elbow 
on tour uh, in 2005. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you can kind of see that. Right. Uh, and uh, I had a door, metal door uh, shattered this bone. Ouch. And I had no idea that I needed that <laughs> yeah. to play, but I had no idea I was using my whole arm mm -hmm. until that happened. And I do relax. That's a very important thing to to keep your your hand and your and your arm relaxed so you don't cramp up. Right. Um, sometimes when you're playing music that's very intense, it's hard to do because you really get into it. But mm -hmm. I found that warming up helps that out. But yes, I do relax it, and I and like I said, I didn't notice that I use all of this um, to make that happen. Mm -hmm. You know, as weird as it might sound. So. The other part of great technique is maintaining how the, the cleanliness, you uh -huh. know, muting, muting the strings. Do you yeah. have particular techniques you're using on your right and your left hands to, uh, to control the ringing in the other strings? Um, you know, just relaxing your hand on the back of the bridge. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's just, uh, I do a lot of, I've done, a, and I still do a lot of studio work. Mm -hmm. When you're in the studio, you have to be precise. I was, I was talking about this last night at my clinic in Omaha uh, about how when I was when I started making records we were really making records we were recording to tape mm -hmm. and you had to get your takes right there was right. no editing with Pro Tools like do two chords and see you later you had to sit there and play the songs well I still do that I still play the songs on Pro Tools mm -hmm. so and, and a lot of that I practice at loud volumes with muting okay. you know, to make sure the notes are defined Okay. You know, um, and it's just, just I guess a lot of hard work. A lot of hard work and a lot of luck. Right. I don't know how much <laughs> luck there is. I think it's a lot of hard work. I think it's. It is but really you know, good. it's it's mainly relaxing your hand on the back of the bridge, and 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 working it. You know. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Now you mentioned your clinic last night, mm -hmm. and you've been associated with Gibson guitars. Yes. What is it that attracts you to the Gibsons? You know, I learned on Gibson guitars. Mm -hmm. Uh, my first real guitar was a was a Gibson uh, 335, and then I went to an Explorer. That was a little too much guitar for me, so uh, I begged my parents uh, to death, and they bought me an EX2 Explorer. Mm -hmm. And that guitar was went everywhere with me. You know, slept with it. I got my first record deal with it. Right. And uh, I can't remember what happened. I know I played that thing so much that. I wore the frets completely off, and the neck just was worn down to, to death. Right. Um, but uh, you know, the Gibson guitars—they're—they're they're built perfect for me. Um, over the years, I've been endorsed with Ibanez, Jackson, mm -hmm. uh, ESP, Yamaha. Nothing to take away from those companies, but the the. Even when I was endorsed with those guys, when I was in the studio, I was recording with Gibsons. Mm -hmm. They just had the right sound. But Gibson was a very hard company to get endorsed by, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, and when you're when you're very rough on guitars, it's you know, you know. And, and plus, when companies are throwing free guitars at you, you're gonna take them. Sure. But uh, I realized about 15 years ago it was that. I don't need any more endorsements because I'm going to play what I want and what I and I went back to my roots, which were Gibson guitars. Sure. Uh, to me, they're built. They're just built right for me. You right. Know? Some people are, are prone to PRS or Fender or whatever. All great Gibson guitars. is my home. Yeah. You know? right. Yeah. right. 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 You got a beautiful uh, Les Paul custom here. Can you tell us about this guitar? This is a, a very new guitar, actually. Uh, this is. Uh, it's it's a it's the brand new black custom that, mm -hmm. that the, at a custom shop. Uh, it's made exactly the same as the old customs, except for this fretboard. This fretboard is rich light, which is a man-made material. Mm -hmm. um, we used it on our Midtown Classic guitar that we put out, and that was the only other guitar we've used it on so far. And they they're testing it out on the custom because of not only a shortage of ebony. Mm -hmm. But you know there were some legal problems that happened a while sure. back, so we started experiment with different types of wood. We were ex we still are in, and using baked maple, mm -hmm. for instance, which is fantastic. Mm -hmm. And uh, this stuff, I thought it was ebony. I didn't know it was rich light. You wouldn't know looking at it. Yeah, I mean, it. looking at it, it looks just like ebony. Yeah. 
Um, and when I found out it was man-made material, it, was, it blew my mind even more. But I get fantastic harmonics off of it. You don't have to oil it. Mm -hmm. You know, um, you just kind of it's you damp a cloth and wipe it off, and it's good to go. Right. Uh, you know, you, the same block inlays as, as the other customs. The same multiply binding here on about both sides, which is real nice. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a got a maple top, card maple top with a mahogany body. It has the Swiss cheese weight relief in it. Okay. Which is funny because I when I was going through the airport uh, on on Monday. The guy X-ray in the machine um, came running out, going, "Man, there's holes in your guitar." <laughs> and I go, "What do you mean, man? There's holes in the body of your guitar?" Oh yeah, yeah, that's that's, that's okay. supposed to be there. No, man, that's gonna ruin your sound, man. That's gonna ruin it, isn't it? That's that's a nice guitar. I go, no, man, we've been doing that forever, believe it or not. You yeah, know? right. Uh, and uh, you know, the custom goes King was debuted in 1954, mm -hmm. right? And, and 57 was the big change of the custom. That was the only year we used a mahogany top. Um, but other than that, the custom shop is spot on over there as far as doing everything right as they used to. Right. BOS, vintage original specs, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, this guitar has really, really sucked me in, man. It's, I can't right. put it down. Right, nice, yeah. nice, nice. Yeah. So you're just off tour. Mm -hmm. You just did a European tour, correct, with Ministry? Yes. And uh, now you're heading in the studio for an album? Yeah, um, and that's that's really new news. Mm -hmm. uh, breaking news here on Yeah, the breaking here. news. <laughs> uh, yeah, we're going to go. I'm, I'm headed uh, to go out in December. Uh, nothing set in stone yet, but I'm pretty sure it's going to happen. Uh, and we did a massive tour in Europe uh, this past summer. We... we uh, we played Woodstock, in Europe, and Poland, mm -hmm. in Warsaw, 700,000 people. Wow. Uh, that was amazing. We headlined Wacken Festival. Mm -hmm. um, I had realized that I, I think I made it because the Scorpions are opening for us. <laughs> <laughs> That's the big time. Yeah. You're all the way. Yeah. Uh, nice. Great tour. Uh, probably one of the best tours that, I, that I've done. Um, and, you know, that comes with just sticking with it over the years and getting your payoff finally. Yeah, that's awesome. You know? that's yeah. Congratulations. Yeah, Wonderful. thank you. Well, we'll look forward to the new record. Yeah, the new record's going to be heavy. And here's one cool thing about the new ministry record is we're doing something we haven't done in years, and that is we're using the, li the live band that we used on tour mm -hmm. to do the record. So I'm real excited about this. Yeah. Well, after the uh, big tour, it should be nice and tight. Yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Yeah. awesome. Excited, man. Man, that's very exciting news. Mike, thanks so much for coming in. It's really hey, a pleasure to having. have you here. It's been a lot of fun. We're looking forward to uh, to uh, seeing videos and things you're going to be working on cool, here. Man. So, you are. so very cool. Thank very you. Cool. Thank you very much. Thanks for joining me for this episode of Guitars and Gear. Be sure to tune in next time. We'll have more guitars. We'll have amps. We'll have pedals. We'll be making music. So tune in next time. I'm Mitch Gallagher. Mm -hmm.